problems, worries, sadness, are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. Welcome to Heart Talk on Shalom World. I'm your host, Dina Marie Hale. Today, our journey takes us to Mongolia as we meet His Grace, Bishop Giorgio Marengo. Bishop Giorgio Marengo. In the spring of 2020, Pope Francis appointed Italian Consolata missionary Father Giorgio Marengo as the head of the Apostolic Prefecture of Ulan Batar. The bishop took religious vows as a member of the Consolata Missionaries or the IMC in 2000, was ordained a priest the next year, and then in 2003 became the first IMC missionary to go to the Young Missionary Church in Asia. What makes up the heart of our bishops who lead the church and bring souls to Christ? Well, let's find out together on this edition of Heart Talk. Greetings, Your Grace, and welcome to Heart Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, we understand you're part of this Italian Consolata missionary community. Can you tell us a little bit about the community and how it's impacted both your priesthood and now as you serve as a bishop? Yes, with pleasure. Well, Consolata Missionary Family is an international family, actually. It was founded in Italy at the beginning of last century, but it has become international very soon. And it was founded by Blessed Joseph Alamano, the rector of the Shrine of Our Lady Consolata in Turin, Torino, northern Italy. And it really came as a gift of, of the Holy Spirit through him to the Universal Church, especially for the evangelization of all those who haven't yet come in contact with Christ. So at the beginning of the last century, that was, uh, there was a strong missionary movement in Europe. And then uh, through the devotion and the uh, strength of this holy priest, the first team of a few missionaries uh, became uh, alive with this uh, strong desire to share the gospel. And we are uh, both men and women. We have uh, also our Consolata missionary sisters, brothers and priests. Your Grace, can you share a little bit about Mongolia and the population there, the different faith traditions and where the Catholic Church fits into this population of people? Yes. Well, Mongolia is a great uh, country in Central Asia, uh, most probably People associate Mongolia with uh, Genghis Khan, the great uh, uh, emperor of the great uh, Mongolian Empire in the 13th century. Today, it's a big country mm, bordering with uh, China and uh, the Russian Federation. It has an overall population of 3.2 million. And uh, it is large. It is five times bigger than Italy, for instance. Uh, and so it's scarcely populated mm, and it has some uh, also interesting features. For instance, the capital city, Ulaanbaatar, has almost half of the total population. So imagine one big country with the half of the population in the city and the rest scattered into the huge steppes of Central Asia. And the religious traditions, the prevalent religious traditions are uh, Tibetan Buddhism, and shamanism too, shamanism being the oldest religious tradition of Mongolia. And there is also a significant presence of uh, Islam, especially in the western part of the country. Well, Christianity is not completely uh, foreign, let us say, to the Mongolian history, because 
already before the year 1000, uh, we know for sure there were Christians living in Mongolia in what at that time was still um, a kind of uh, federation of different uh, tribes. Mm, for sure, for out of archaeological researches, we know that around uh, the year 1000, 1100, the 12th and, and 13th century, Christianity was well known even among high um, rank people in the Mongolian Empire. It was the so-called Nestorian tradition, what we now use, um, tend to call Eastern, uh, Eastern Christianity, so um, Assyrian or Syro uh, Christianity. At that time, Christianity was well known, but then for different re historical reasons, um, Buddhism prevailed, uh, so that today Christianity is a tiny minority, and Catholicism within Christianity is even smaller because uh, out of the 30 to 50,000 Christians of different denominations, Catholic Mongolians are only 1,300. Mm. So we know each other uh, and it is a, a, a small and uh, vibrant uh, community. Your Grace, with that opportunity to connect closely with the people, what has been your approach, first as a priest, but now as a bishop, to reach the people, to connect with your priests and the people of Mongolia who are Catholic? Well, the most important thing is to really um, get acquainted and to, the, to this reality, to learn well the language in order to be able to communicate and to really enter into this uh, life dialogue with uh, everybody. I think I, I feel privileged of being here because being a tiny minority, the Catholic Church uh, somehow resembles to what the early church was at the beginning of our history, when the large majority of people were following other religious traditions. And therefore the witness of the first, the early church Christians were, was so important. And that's the same for us today. It is a matter of uh, slowly entering into dialogue with this culture and, and with these uh, traditions, with the people of the, of the neighborhood. And through this effort of building authentic, meaningful relationships, we are able also to share our faith. Absolutely, absolutely. Give us a sense, Your Grace, of your mission and your role as you see it as shepherd of the church there. What really has become your mission? I received this uh, new call uh, after uh, 16 years of uh, being a simple missionary in the countryside. I was a parish priest of a newly established community in the south of the country, where uh, so far the Catholic Church had never been present. And then I received last year this uh, special call, uh, which I, I took it from the hands of God, though it was uh, hard to, to realize that I was called to serve the church in this way. I feel the, the call is uh, made of uh, sacrifice and offering myself to the Lord for uh, the building up of his kingdom and especially to create uh, unity and communion and harmony in, uh, in the local church. The church in Mongolia uh, exists as an apostolic prefecture, so we are not yet a diocese and not even an, an apostolic vicariate. We are still a young church. Next year we will celebrate the 30th anniversary of the re-establishment of the Catholic Church in Mongolia because we like to consider also the ancient uh, presence of the Christians as part of our history. And nevertheless, we need also to consider that most of the um, church uh, forces, energies, are represented by foreign missionaries. We have only one local priest and one deacon who is uh, getting ready to be ordained. But the, most of the uh, pastoral forces come from abroad. And it is important to create a sense of identity. We, we are a particular church in the universal church, and we do need to create uh, communion and unity among the different missionaries and uh, institutes that operate here. 
Your Grace, when you talk about identity, what are ways that you as a shepherd are developing that sense of identity of the Catholic people there in Mongolia? Thank you for the, this question, which is very important and brings us to the core of our missionary call. I rely on the Holy Spirit invoking him every day on the Catholic flock of Mongolia, that he may really lead the individuals to feel how beautiful it is to belong to the universal church, the people of God, and at the same time to foster and to develop their own identity as Mongolian Catholics. You know, a Mongolian becoming Catholic should become also a model citizen of his or her country so that he or she will not lose the, uh, the good elements of uh, the culture from which he, come, he or she comes from. And at the same time, he or she will contribute to the universal church. So we have uh, mm, developed these uh, pastoral strategies especially to have a unified uh, way of praying. It might seem strange, but it is not so easy to provide a new uh, country with the, the necessary tools to pray. For instance, to have the same texts, the same translations, because in the first years we were having different uh, translations. And the, for instance, the Roman Missal was not yet completely translated. But in 2016, we got the recognizio, the official permission from the Holy See, from the Congregation on Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, on the newly made trans Mongolian translation of the Roman Missal. It was a huge effort made by our local church. But now we have, for instance, the fullness of the mm, texts of the liturgy in Mongolian language, and we can use them at the level of all our communities. This is an important mean uh, tool to, to be used. And, uh, and also we develop common programs on catechesis, on um, education, so that we create a sense of belonging, a sense of uh, identity. Community is so important, Your Grace. And I just, I think about the apostles as I hear your story and your your call to be a shepherd to these people and the, your role to really build up this church. What have you found so far as to be the the most joyful part of serving the people of Mongolia as their as their bishop? Well, I would say that the the biggest joy as a missionary first and as a missionary bishop is to really contemplate how uh, powerful is the working of the Holy Spirit into people's hearts. No matter we do our best, mm, and uh, though uh, we are so weak and uh, um, not ready to to face or to address all the problems that we find. I remember one lady uh, in the place where I used to live before, she followed me once in the market I was there to buy stuff and then she followed me. She wanted to know why this foreigner was there. And then she reached our uh, church, which uh, has, has the shape of a Mongolian tent, the yurt, or in Mongolian we call it gir. You might have seen some of them. And she was surprised to see me there. And then she started the faith journey until she really encountered the Lord and she decided to follow him. And it was not easy for her. To become a Catholic in a country that has different religious traditions is not easy. You feel some, sometimes rejected or mm, misunderstood. And yet the Holy Spirit works through these wonderful people. Maybe they are not many in numbers, but they are very committed. We are not announcing uh, a gospel that is the solution of all our human problems. So many times we feel... Um, depressed because we cannot address all the different social and uh, political problems we find around us. Yet we have the Lord Jesus risen among, our, among us, among uh, this uh, humanity in which we are sent. And the Lord and the Holy Spirit are telling us that we can find peace even in the middle of difficulties, of troubles, of suffering. And I think this is the most revolutionary message that we, the Catholic Church, all the Christian believers, we can bring to the world, that there is hope also in the midst of this troubled world, 
Christ is our hope, and that is the good news that we continue to share, and how great to hear you are doing that, your your grace. Give us a sense when you do come across those challenges and talking about having such a small Catholic community, what has been your approach to reach out to the most vulnerable of those without a voice in your community, to be a faith representative of the Catholic Church, but to touch those whose lives are in great difficulty or distress? This has been actually the main concern of the church from the very beginning. Uh, the, uh, the, when the first three missionaries came here in 1992, and one of them was uh, our beloved Bishop Venceslao Padilla, CICM, they really started by a simple witnessing to Christ's love by serving the poorest of the poor. In, in the 90s, Mongolia was a post-communist country uh, suffering for the, the consequences of a, a difficult uh, regime. And there, there was a, a great uh, problem related to poverty and to uh, different kinds of uh, social um, problems. But then gradually the country has um, taken its responsibility and uh, yet the commitment of the church uh, has never ceased. And we still reach out to the poor, to the unprivileged, especially to those with uh, uh, disabilities and those marginalized. We have different centers for marginalized people. And I would say that this is also a good way to really do what we can, even when we, we are not able to openly speak about our Lord's love for everybody we can still perform acts of charity and pure love for those most in need. And this is a powerful witness because people start asking questions and by getting together in these programs, they like to see a different face of the church in working with these people. Beautiful. Your Grace, when you talk to young people, what is your message to them about purpose and meaning of life? Yes, the, the, the youth are uh, the greatest resource uh, of uh, every country. And Mongolia is a young country compared to the West. When I go back to Europe and I, I, I look around, I see mostly elderly people. In Here in Mongolia, it is a great hope to see uh, young families, many children and uh, committed youth. But the, the risk for them is to get lost into the mess of uh, different messages they get from all kinds of resources. So for me, I make a point to, when I talk to them to, to go straight to the, what, you, what you mentioned before. What is the meaning of life? Do you find peace? Mm, do you think you can find peace really in a consumeristic way of living? Or do you think that your life depends only on what you earn every month or the, the dress you have every day? And I try to make questions, to ask them questions. And by their answers, I try to connect with the, the hope we have in Christ. And especially for, uh, for uh, young people, it is important to feel that the Lord is close to them. The Lord uh, trusts in them. And he has a great hope in them for the, the future of this country. And it is important to offer them moral and spiritual support because Mongolia is a fast changing society. In, in some, to some respect, we can say that there are some traditional values that are uh, still quite uh, strong, especially in the countryside, while in the city, in the capital city, uh, globalization is also very strong and there is sometimes a sense of mm, being lost lost in this uh, uh, world of uh, today. So it is important for us to be close to the youth, to work with them and to approach them in, in a correct way. Your Grace, as we come to a close, what's your final message for our viewers today to give us hope? Well, my message would be rediscover the beauty of your faith. Never uh, let be uh, overcome by fear 
even though you might come across difficulties and also uh, scandals because uh, as human creatures we are all weak but uh, rediscover the beauty of your call as a christian mission starts from a love that burns with love for christ and for the rest of humanity and as much as you rediscover the beauty of your faith you will become the apostles of your place you will become uh, true missionaries in your own uh, environment and don't forget that there is also a specific vocation in the church the beautiful vocation of uh, the so-called ad gentes missionaries those who leave their own countries in order to go wherever the church is not present or where the church is present all only at the initial stage and where there is a tremendous need of uh, priests sisters lay uh, volunteers to witness to christ's love to those who have never had the chance to know him so this is my message to you and uh, also uh, i uh, add one request to pray to invoke the holy spirit on on us on this young church of asia that we may become the people of god that he likes us to be let us pray for the holy spirit to continue to bless all of our missionaries and could we ask for your blessing over our viewers today sure if you like i can give this blessing in mongolian yes please the lord be with you and with your spirit Amen. It has been a delight, your grace, to have you with us today on this episode of Heart Talk. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your vocation. And yes, we will continue to pray for all missionaries. And we do want to thank our viewers for joining us today on Shalom World's Heart Talk. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. God bless you all. the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you.